Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about running gait. So in running gait, we have what's called a non-support phase. Uh, so that's a phase of the gait cycle where neither leg is in stance. Uh, so during walking, there is no non-support phase. We're always in either double or single support. In running gait, instead of having double support phase twice, Instead, we have non-support phase twice. Um, so in running, we have an overlap of when both legs are in swing, as opposed to in walking, where we have an overlap of when both legs are in stance. Uh, so running gait overall is almost identical to walking gait, except that running includes a non-support phase and there is no double support phase. So the non-support phase is also called the aerial phase because we're in the air. Um, it's when neither foot is in contact with the ground. Uh, so we have non-support in running, hopping, skipping, or jumping, but we do not have it during walking gait. So stance phase during running is about 33% stance and 67% uh, swing phase. Um, which of course in walking gait, it was about 60% stance and about 40% swing. Uh, so in running, where we have swing phases that overlap with each other, we have a lot more swing time or air time um, than we do stance. Whereas in walking gait, we have stance that overlaps. We have a lot more stance time. Uh, the amount of arm swing, the stride length, cadence, and the amount of knee flexion, tibiofemoral flexion, all change depending on the speed of running gait. Um, so when we're running, um, we're going faster or slower, all of these different elements of gait all change with speed. So in running gait, we have greater muscle activation, um, especially to control pronation during foot flat and initiate sup supination for toe off. Uh, so there are significantly higher forces uh, going through the ankles and, and through the foot into the ground uh, during running compared with walking. And so it takes a much greater muscle activation to be able to control pronation. So if we don't have that muscle activation, we don't have as good control of pronation, and that's where we might go into hyperpronation during foot flat. Uh, so we have... Um, where we make, oh my gosh, the term just went right out of my head. Um, <laughs> wow, uh, where we make contact with our heel um, at the start of the gait cycle. Um, and then we move into our foot flat. Uh, when our foot goes flat, we have a tendency, we're going to pronate at least a little bit at that point, um, but we just wanna make sure that we have a great, great enough muscle activation that we control that pronation and don't go uh, too far into hyperpronation. Um, higher running speed causes less vertical displacement. So when we go from a walking gait to a running gait, we increase the amount of vertical displacement. Then as we increase our speed in running gait, we decrease our amount of vertical displacement. So the faster we're going, uh, the less superior inferior displacement we have. Uh, the ground reaction forces are two to six times greater during running than during walking gait. And the faster we go, the greater the forces. Okay, and we'll talk about ground reaction forces in a future lecture. And we'll talk about how uh, muscle contraction relates to our ground reaction forces. But for now, just know that during running, we have two to six times greater forces going through between the body and uh, the ground during walking or during running than during walking. Okay, thanks for watching.